A charred corpse, an unknown victim, a gruesome attraction. September 1934, just outside of Albury in New South Wales, a farmer finds the body of a woman in a ditch, so badly burnt, she's unrecognisable. Strange for the time, she's discovered wearing traditional Chinese pyjamas. She becomes known as the Pyjama Girl. Without an identity, police have to rely on what they do know. Her hair colour, her height, her age. She's been badly beaten, and x-rays reveal she was shot in the head. Her identity unknown, there can be no motive, no suspects, an unsolved case. Desperate to know who this young girl was, police hatch a grotesque strategy. They display her corpse at Sydney University's medical school. The corpse quickly becomes a macabre attraction and hundreds of potential leads surface. The most promising comes almost a year after her body was found. Police receive a tip-off that the body is that of a missing Sydney cinema usherette, Linda Agostini. On further investigation, police aren't sure the dental records don't match. The pyjama girl has six feelings, but Linda Agostini has eight. Police hit a dead end, and the case goes cold. Ten years later, in 1944, a number of bizarre coincidences lead to a breakthrough. Embattled New South Wales Police Commissioner Bill McKay hopes solving the case will win him some respect and restore the New South Wales Police Force's reputation. McKay assigns new detectives who re-examine every file and every potential victim. Fifth on the list, Agostini, Linda. Though initially eliminated because of the dental record mismatch, McKay instructs detectives to compare Agostini's teeth again. Unbelievably, the police discover two new fillings they hadn't seen the first time. Eight fillings in total, the same as Linda Agostini. Five people who were close to Linda positively identify the corpse as her. But who could have murdered her? All eyes are on her husband, Tony Agostini, and a bizarre coincidence. Police Commissioner McKay knows Tony well. He's the waiter at his favourite restaurant. McKay interviews Tony Agostini in his office. After 10 years, Tony Agostini finally confesses to the murder. According to his statement, Tony Agostini accidentally shot his wife during an argument. Panicking, he dumped the body near Albury and burnt it. When asked about his wife's whereabouts, Agostini told people she had left him and he didn't know where she was. He is tried for murder, but is convicted on the lesser charge of manslaughter and gets sentenced to six years in prison. Though Tony Agostini confessed, some were suspicious of how neatly the case was solved. How did dental experts get it so wrong for so many years? Some felt it was a little too convenient that the killer was literally found under the nose of an embattled police commissioner, embroiled in scandal and unsolved cases. And then this. Tony Agostini is released after just three years and nine months and deported to his original home of Italy. Was Tony Agostini set up, or was he made an offer too good to refuse?